subdue peoples under me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. God magnifies the salvation of his king and shows mercy to his anointed one. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Wisdom 10, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. And to the Spirit. <coughs> According to St. Matthew. Glory to thee, O Lord. Glory to thee. Let us attend. At that time, <clears throat> a man came up to Jesus and kneeling before him said, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers terribly, for often he falls into the fire and often into the waters. I brought him to your disciples, and they could not heal him. Jesus said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to, am to bear with you? Bring him to me. And Jesus rebuked him, and the demon came out of him, and the boy was cured instantly. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? Jesus said to them, Because you are, have no faith, truly I say to you, you have faith, even a grain of mustard seed. You will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. But this kind never comes out except by prayer and fasting. As they were traveling together through Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is to be delivered in the hands of men, and they will kill him, and he will rise on the third day. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to ages of ages. Amen. This incident occurs in all three of the, of the uh, synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Um, and it is based on when Jesus and James and John uh, and Peter were up on uh, Mount uh, Tabor, and the uh, transfiguration took place, and they'd just come down from the transfiguration. And uh, this man had brought his severely epileptic son to the remaining um, nine disciples for them to cast out the demon and heal the boy. And they were not able to. And so there's this toma of the Pharisees and scribes. Ah, see, we knew, we knew, you know, obviously they can't do this, all of faith. And <clears throat> in the midst of this is Jesus seeing this swirling crowd around the apostles and the man. The man comes to Jesus and kneels down and asks him to cure his son because the apostles weren't able to do it. Now in Mark and Luke, they contain the other part of the story. He, Jesus says to the man, all things are possible to him who believes. And the man responds, I believe, help my unbelief. And this is where you and I can really identify with him because we have really lost belief in our age with all the monuments to the ingeniousness of man. Uh, we have lost our faith in God's direct intervention through prayer, uh, through anointing with oil, and so on. And so we really need to work on, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Because we have illness after illness occur, and we go to biomechanical medicine, which has made great strides in the recent decades, and when it fails, then we give up. And don't turn to God with belief, with a prayer, I believe, help my unbelief, so that God can indeed hear us, heal us or those near to us. And so in that way, we don't take seriously the things Jesus showed us during his uh, three years of public ministry on earth because he showed us the way in terms of what we need to do to be made whole. And yet we tend to believe so much in biomechanical medicine that when it fails, we think nothing else can help. And yet over and over again, God has helped through the hands of those 
who pray and fast, which Jesus said it's necessary to do this kind of healing, which puts us close enough to God to be a conduit, a pipe for his power of light that heals. And uh, we need to turn to God and I believe help my unbelief. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now endeavoring to aid you to make you